everybody. Thanks for stopping by for another virtual visit. I'm David Mustin and Director of Communications for the Dearborn Public Schools. Joining me, as always, our Superintendent, Dr. Glenn Maleko. Glenn, how are you doing today? Doing well, David. Uh, good as always. It's a nice day outside. I see you're outside uh, with the nice weather. And I was outside earlier conducting some of my meetings electronically in our, our new world from outside in the nice weather. So it is a whole new world and a lot of virtual meetings as well. You know, and with that, we have virtual meetings. We have a lot of, we're doing virtual meetings. We have a lot of teachers and principals doing right. virtual meetings, teachers doing virtual meetings with students and not only meetings, but online and virtual learning. Sure. And with all of that online usage comes some online precautions. Yeah, we want to just put the message out here. We're doing this special show on just safety, internet safety, social media. Uh, we're not going to get into every specific application, but we just want to remind uh, all of us, staff, ourselves, to be cautious. I know, for example, there's different security provisions in some of your email. There's a lot of different scams out there or individuals that are looking to take care, uh, to take advantage, not to take care, but take advantage of individuals in a time of crisis. I'm hearing it about, you know, the, the checks that are coming from the federal government, from the stimulus, be careful of the scams. I can say I get multiple, and it was happening for a while, I get these phone calls, uh, texts, people want you to click on this link, and I'm very cautious. Sometimes it's even a source I may know, but I'm not sure, and I actually verify if it's a legitimate source. So I guess we just have to remind people to be careful. About four or five years ago, I did have someone who was trying to hack into my email, for example. And then I won't say what the security provisions are, but there's things that you can do that prevent individuals from getting into your devices, like two-factor uh, authentication and other things that you can do. So I want to remind parents as well to be careful what their stu you know, their children are doing. I know I have two teenagers right now, and I'm always very cautious with them and making sure there's a way to monitor. And, and I'm, I'm very concerned with, you know, I'm on their social media that I've approved, that I allow them. And again, I believe it's a parent decision. Some I don't want them on because I just I'm not saying necessarily they're going to do anything wrong. But, you know, I don't know who else is out there in the world. They could be anywhere. And so I just I just think it's an important message uh, for parents. I think you were mentioning as well, just to be cautious with all these virtual meetings and things that are going on. And I know there are different platforms that are available for meetings, for holding meetings. But within the district, we really have put our money on Google and using Google Hangouts because of the security aspect, because it's a little bit more stable. So for us and for everybody in, in, in the Dearborn Public Schools, we really should be using the Google, Google Hangouts, correct? And that's where we feel secure because it goes over our network. Even though people are at home, it still goes over our controlled network. That's what I used with the students. The Google Hangouts has been the platform. You know, we have Google Classroom that we use, and then we have our Moodle iLearn. It's all secured. The nice thing is, is that people, in order to access it, they have to log in through their official district password. And again, you can do extra steps to protect that. That includes for students, because by law, we have to filter information that comes on the Internet. And so, again, we can't control things that are in people's homes, but we can control what's going over our network. And so we feel much more comfortable. It's not 100 percent foolproof. I'm just going to be honest. We do our best. But people are constantly, you know, they're trying to sometimes even hack into social media and other things. And so we just got to be careful. Uh, one of the, the and I won't mention specific platforms, but we feel more uh, secure with our own platform that's on our network because we're hearing of other platforms out there that are getting hacked into during virtual meetings. And we don't want inappropriate things that are going on where our students may be meeting or our students may just be doing projects or maybe students are not doing anything relative to the school. They're just interacting with their peers. And so then that becomes the parents to really look at who might be hacking into their virtual meetings. And so that is a concern. And I have heard of things that have since we're at home and we're more on the Internet. And I've, I've even spoken to our, our legal counsel about other issues related to the governor's order. And we're hearing of more incidents of of virtual bullying that's going on and things not necessarily in Dearborn, just in the broader community, because as people are stuck, they're, they're resorting to using technology. Um, whatever I put on social media or on the internet, I'm comfortable with anybody seeing in the world. So, you know, you gotta be careful what you say. I've said it about students and we, we did a show, I think three or four years ago on this. You know, once you put something out there, you can't take it back. Oh sure, Snapchat or some of those things that they say might vanish, but there, someone takes a screenshot and 
and it, it, it's once it's out there, it's out there, and I, we've seen it. And so we want to protect our students. I think that's the most important thing that we're doing right now because there's such a pressure to be online. We also have to take those extra precautions. Like I said, I'm doing the same thing. I have extra security. I'm careful with the email that I may not recognize coming in or other things. So it's really, you know, our students have the responsibility for their own use and what they do. And then also we have the parents who are also need to be part of it and need to help as well and, and kind of monitor. And then on our end, we will do as much as we can do to try to make those platforms as secure. I know our uh, great folks in our uh, information technology department under the leadership of uh, uh, Troy Patterson have put together some tips and, and some helpful resources. If you go to the information technology uh, website, part of the Dearborn Public Schools website, uh, you can find some of those things there on their page. Yes, I mean, they do a great job. We have a firewall to protect our, our students, and I know they put a lot of those great tips up there. Another thing, Dave, I'd like to mention is just this came up at our Student Advisory Council meeting um, before we actually were physically shut down. It was actually the last day um, that we were physically open where I met with them at Etzel, and we were talking about... Um, sources on social media on the internet are they providing accurate information so they may not be looking to directly hack into what you're doing or um, to do something mischievous in your particular platform but they may be providing you misinformation which creates anxiety and things out in the public uh, we were hearing that all of a sudden we we're hearing these rumors about dearborn schools well guess what i told the students and i think we said it last friday when we were meeting with them if you want to know about dearborn schools the best way, place to go is the official Dearborn Schools website and the official Dearborn Schools Facebook and the official Twitter. Don't believe every other person that might be making a comment on Instagram or any other platform out there. Um, and, and if you want to follow it, we have an official Instagram. You know, so I, we got to be careful with our sources and especially with this COVID-19. When you're doing any kind of research, you want to vet your sources. And, and so if you're doing something for a school assignment, you got to make sure it's accurate information. Secondly, we don't want to create, you know, um, public anxiety or or uh, put people through additional stress that they may not need to because we're believing it based on an inaccurate source of information. Absolutely. Great advice, Glenn. Great advice. Well, I. Again, thanks so much for taking a few minutes to stop by and, and do one of, of these yeah. virtual visits. We've, we've done quite a few now and uh, getting to be a, a good routine for us. Yes, we're very used to it. So, Dave, I appreciate your work. And I want to mention, you can't see them now, but Eric and Jacob, they do a great job with the production behind the scenes. Yeah, those guys uh, keep us looking good, Glenn. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for everybody who took a few minutes to stop by and visit with us, thank you so much. Uh, like we said, there's a lot of information and a lot more coming out. And especially in these days, uh, the information is changes so rapidly. And we're trying to do our best to stay on top of things and keep this flow of information coming to our public uh, Dr. Maleko does a great job on his social media platforms. I highly suggest you follow him. Uh, he's on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook as well. He has his own blog as well. So all of those are great places and our district places are also the best spot to get the actual factual information uh, first. So, and until we talk to everybody again, uh, stay safe and we'll see you next time.